Hello everyone, uh, it's Keith Crowley here again, and today we're in the Ringling Museum of Arts Gallery 8 in their permanent galleries, and this particular painting directly behind me is Christ Raising the Dead Son of the Widow of Nain, and I want to talk again about composition and how that affects the narrative that is presented. So again, we're talking a lot about triangles and how they're often used to create a sense of balance and also direct your eye throughout a space uh, to also create movement. And here we have um, an immediate triangular shape that's created by the stretcher that the boy's laying on. And then we have triangles throughout this figure in the, in the right hand side. And again, another large triangle that goes through Christ's arm. So we have a triangle there, triangles there, and then we have um, a space that starts to get away from the idea of a triangle. Um, but notice how when you get above all of these triangles, that space kind of settles down. It's supposed to do that. That is the area that sort of sets the stage. It's not what we're supposed to primarily look at. Also, think about how much space is up there. When you have lots of space over your head, what happens is your eye tends to go down to where the artist wants you to pay most attention to. What I think is really nice about this painting is this entry point right here. This entry point is not much. There's not much space where the edge of that foot um, reaches the edge of the canvas. but we're supposed to feel crowded. A lot of these environments, like where these passages of the New Testament, they tell us that these are often crowded scenes. What I also love is the liberties that are taken anatomically. So the boy looks fairly naturalistic. He recedes into space nicely with a sense of foreshortening. The Christ figure looks very proportionate. But this character in the front, if he were to stand up, would probably be taller than any NBA center in the league right now. And um, his body proportions would also be quite off if he stood up the size of his upper torso to where his leg meets. But I don't think we really mind it, at least I don't, because I love how this space is intersected and divided with this strong red. Um, it really creates this Again, like we were talking about, a sense of balance, but also a sense of movement. And a lot of that is because of these relationships of that triangle to this triangle to that triangle. There's groupings that are very pleasing to the eye. What I also find very interesting about this work is the use of the expressions of hands. So here we're, we have a figure in the front that has this set of hands that are obviously like surprised, alarmed. We have another set of hands that are pleading for mercy. We have another set of hands or a hand that creates this almost like a, a, a symbol of authority, um, almost like a puppet master raising up. But it could be one of, of uh, power and authority, but it could also be one gesturing like a sense of peace, you know, be calm. Um, your boy's going to be all right. There's also some other great subtleties in this painting that I love. Notice the flesh of the guy in the foreground who looks very vibrant and capable. The Christ figure, too. They're all very much, um, there's blood flowing through there. But when you look at the boy, not so much. He's very pale, almost looks like somebody in an Edward Munch painting, kind of zombie-like, kind of dead, but beautiful, subtle changes from one character to another character. But again, what creates this scenario to be so dynamic right off the bat is um, how the artist Domenico Fiaselli uh, creates the 
the whole, you know, we always say that the whole should work before the parts do. So the whole should always supersede the, the sum of the parts. So that's all I have on this painting in this short video. Uh, I hope you find it useful and you think about that when you're composing.